On the damaged and worn fiberglass panel, repair all the voids and cracks with filler. Usually a car body filler is suffice. Once you're happy with the finish of the part, it's a good idea to mount it on some wooden blocks. This will keep the part sturdy for when you do the rest of the work on it. Apply a coat of PVA release agent over the surface. More than one coat may be needed depending on how the first coat applies. If you notice any splits in the PVA, it's a good idea to give it a second coat, just quickly rubbing over and being careful not to rub the first coat off. Leave the release agent to dry. This should take approximately 20 minutes. Then apply an even coat of the polyester gel coat over the surface. If you've got a reasonably good finish on the part, only one coat should be sufficient. Two coats may be required if the surface is not that good and you think that you might have to do some rubbing down on the mold surface. Leave the gel coat to cure. This should take approximately two hours at room temperature. The surface should be slightly tacky, but as long as the gel coat doesn't come off onto your fingertips, then you're ready for the next stage. Approximately five layers of 450 gram chop strand mat should be sufficient to produce a mold of this size. It's a good idea before you mix any resin to have the fiberglass mat cut to size before you begin. Add between 1-2% to catalyst to the resin and stir in thoroughly. Brush a layer of the resin over the gel coat, place the mat over and add more resin to the matting. Between each layer consolidate with a paddle roller and add more resin if required. The choice of resin to use is quite simple for such small parts. A general purpose resin will suffice. Although the one shown in the picture is a resin called Optimold, which has very low shrinkage. Although this has to be applied all five layers at once. This in turn generates the exotherm needed for its curing characteristics. If using a general purpose resin, leave on the mold for at least a few days to cure. Optimal tool and resin can be demolded the day after. Turn the mold over and with a plastic wedge, separate the part from the mold, carefully working right the way around the edges first, then lift the part completely from the mold. The mold usually will need to be rubbed with wet and dry paper, starting from a 240 grit, working up to a 1200 grit, depending on the mold's condition. Then you can polish with a compound such as Ferregla or tea cut. Apply 8 to 10 quarts of good quality Carnuba based wax to the mold, such as TR-108, Meguiar's 8 or M-Wax. Leave each coat one hour between each application. For example, rub on the wax, leave it for five minutes, then buff off using a cotton cloth, leave for one hour, and then repeat the same process for the next nine waxes. Now your mold is ready for the first layer of gel coat. Apply this at room temperature in a single layer. Recommendation is about 0.6 mil thick, often hard to measure, but if you brush on evenly without any excess in the corners, you should be fine. Make sure that on the first lift the gel coat is applied correctly and at the right temperature. Otherwise the cross-linking monomer in the gel coat will settle and eat through the gel and present itself to the mold surface, dissolving the wax and causing the part to adhere to the mold. Now the part has got an even layer of gel coat. Remember to be careful not to get any excess in the corners. Decide how much matting you will need for the part. Usually a couple of layers of 450 gram CSM is enough for a panel like this. Pre-cut the mat and apply layer by layer. Wet out the gel coat, apply first layer and then stipple more resin into the mat. Cons again, consolidate between layers with a paddle roller. The chopped strand mat is held together by an emulsion binder. When this is wet out with the resin, after about 30 seconds, the resin will break down this binder and the mat will soften, making it much easier to push into the corners. A simple paddle roller is an essential tool when doing fiberglass laminating. This removes any trapped air between the layers and consolidates the layers together. You can get these rollers in a variety of options such as finned, washer, bristle and bolt. The paddle roller is probably the most common and the most economical one to use. 
Unless you have the correct trimming equipment, it is best to green trim. This is when you can cut the laminate with a sharp knife such as a Stanley knife at the right time between cure. Too soft and you will ruin the laminate by detaching it from the mould. Too hard, you will not be able to trim it with a Stanley knife. Keep the mould edges waxed thoroughly and be careful not to cut into them with the knife edge. After you've finished trimming the panels, leave the panels in the mould and demould the day after. Use either a plastic wedge or something that will not damage the mould surface while removing the panel. In this case, a wooden spatula did the job. Gently work around the edges to release the part. The mould will need an application of wax for the first four to five lifts, just until it has been broken in. After that, a wax every three to four lifts is normal. You will soon get to know your mould and its capabilities. All moulds tend to develop their own characteristics and need to be treated slightly different. Once the finished part has been lifted, sand the edges and check for any faults such as air voids. Please also refer to the many project pages on our website at www.ecfiberglasssupplies.co.uk